In the last video, I made a few logic gates. This is great, but we still don't know how to use them. Luckily, I invested in a whiteboard. I do want to reiterate the path we are taking with this series is a very inefficient way of building a computer. It will work, but it will be very slow. The fancy modern computers have to be as fast as possible, but we aren't necessarily looking for speed, we're just looking for a solid understanding. But I am actually building the computer along the way. A suggestion that I had gotten was, how do transistors work? I don't want to be confusing, so I'm going to use simple terms and explain everything with the whiteboard. I'm drawing the transistor as such. It has three pins, the emitter, the base, and the collector. The collector is what is connected to the ground. The emitter is what is connected to your VCC. This is also where your LED is typically connected. The base is what determines whether the switch is on or off. If we connect the base pin to a positive current, it will complete the circuit and in this case the LED will turn on. Maybe it's hard to understand right now why this is so helpful. After all, the transistor connected like this doesn't actually serve much of a logical purpose. The magic really happens when you change things up. If I move this LED and transistor around and add a positive connection, we have a NOT gate with just one transistor. You can't do everything with just one transistor, which is why we need to use more than one. Let's visualize what two transistors do. Here we have two transistors. I just wired them up just like the last circuit, but that still doesn't do any good. We just have two transistors that don't have much purpose. But the second I connect this pin to this pin, we now have an AND gate. But why does that work? What's the difference? It's actually quite simple. For the LED to be on, it must have a connection to the 5 volts and the ground. In this circuit, there's only one connection to the 5.5 volts and the ground. This means in order for the LED to turn on, it must go through both transistors to get a connection to the ground. Right now, the transistors will not allow current through them, but in order to do that, we must click both buttons at the same time. With the same two transistors, we can wire them up slightly differently and still get a different result. This is what is so cool about logic gates. Looking at the logic for OR, we know that we can press either button and the LED will turn on. It's quite a simple circuit, so if you think about it, how did the AND gate work? It was because there was only one connection to the ground. For the OR gate, allowing the LED more than one path to the ground is technically the answer. We need either button to work, so connecting both transistors straight to the LED will give us the OR gate. Alright, now that we recapped the AND, OR, and NOT, let's talk about why we need those three logic gates. So we are familiar with truth tables. They're just showing you what the expected outputs should be. So let me draw a truth table. This may look familiar because this is AND's truth table. Why are we looking at this? I'm going to explain how we can get the logic behind truth tables or how to solve simple circuits. Let's look at the first row. We can actually write out what this is. NOT A AND not B. So when A is 0, that is not A. If B is 0, this is not B. When the output is 0, you technically not the end result. Alright, the next part is A and not B. And the next row is not A and B. The last row is A and B. If you noticed, that is Anne's truth table. It's just A and B. When starting to solve the logic circuit, it's best to look at your outputs first. It's best to look at what is least occurring. Is it 1 or is it 0? In this case, it is 1. We can only solve a circuit for one output, either 0 or 1. If we solve for both, then we're obviously overcomplicating things and wasting resources like we just did. So let's get rid of the zeros. Alright, so let's look at this new truth table. When there are the same number of zeros and ones on the output, it is more simple to just solve for one. Let's go ahead and solve this. This is A and not B. The next row is not A and B. So what do we do when we have to solve for two rows? Well, we're checking if two things are true, so in order to combine those, we can just use OR. So let's visualize this as a circuit. Alright, so let's look at the first part, A and not B. That means the A needs to go to the AND gate. So next is not B. So B needs to go into a NOT and then into that same AND. The next row is NOT A AND B. So we're going to use the other AND gate and have the A go to the NOT and then the AND B. So that means a regular B goes to the AND. So the green and the red are two separate rows. How do we connect those rows? That is where the OR gate comes in hand. 
So we connect the, the first AND to the OR. Then we need to connect the second AND to the OR. Lastly, we just connect the OR to the OUT. So what logic gate is this? This is known as the XOR gate, or exclusive OR gate. Alright, I have one more that we can look at. This truth table is a little weird because when no inputs are on, the output is on. All right, so we do wanna look for what is the least occurring number. In this case, it is just one. So let's explain this logic. It is not A and not B. That's it. Considering it's so small, we can actually visualize the circuit right here. The circuit only needs three logic gates, two nots and one and. And connecting it all together is just as simple. The A goes right into the first knot, and the B goes into the other knot. It's pretty much just that simple. This is what's called the NOR gate, or not OR. Something neat about logic gates is that this isn't the only way we can make the NOR gate. We can use just one OR and one NOT. We can make it out of NAND gates. There's many ways you can make it. But a fun fact about the NOR gate, we can actually build an entire computer using only NOR gates. All right, I have another one for you. Let's look at this truth table. We see that we have three ones and only one zero. So we should solve for zero. But I would like to show you the difference between solving for one and zero. This is what's known as a NAND gate. As you can see, solving for one is fairly straightforward. We just say what the values are, but let's solve for zero. This would be A and B, but we know that's not true because if it were A and B, that would just be AND. If the output is zero, that just means we have to reverse it. This would be not A and B. So let's visualize this. Here's my new simulation. There are more visually pleasing simulators out there, but I really like this one for its simplicity. This is on NANDgame.com. The NAND gate is actually another universal gate. You can use only NAND gates to make a computer, which is pretty neat. That is actually what this site is all about. We can make the NAND gate like such. We can use two OR gates, three AND gates, and four NOT gates. As you can see, it works. The truth table is completely fine, but it's just extremely inefficient. This uses way too many transistors for such a simple logic gate, which is why we just need to solve for one row. This would simply just be a NOT and an AND. You just learned very basic binary algebra. When we get more complicated circuits, we can use binary algebra to reduce the amount of logic gates used. It's pretty neat, but it does take some practice. In the next video, we are going to look at some simple circuits that we can build with all the new logic gates that we have just learned so far. If you learned something new, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section. You can always leave suggestions or questions and I can add them to my next video. Thank you all for those of you who made it this far. And I, uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!